up out to all my fellow reefers out there in reef world. This is OG Reefs in Aquarium. I'm your boy Samuel. And uh, just getting over COVID. Eh, so deal with me. I look a little struggling. But I recently posted a video and people were asking, how do I keep such coloration in my corals? Uh, even when the whites are on. So let me flip the camera around. Now this is my reef tank. Now these are with white zone, very little blues, and you can see I still get very vivid, great coloration in all my corals. SPS, my LPS. Here you go, it's SPS. Just showing you a little bit of the tank. I get great growth. Now remember, this is a 110 water box. It's only been up and running for approximately. I give you some shadow here. Let me see here a little better. Maybe, maybe a little better. It's approximately running for four months. And look at the growth. Look at the acans. They're fluffy. The OG. Here is a home wrecker. Right here. Polyps extended. That's a WWC stylo in the back. Polyps extended. That's a Jason Fox rainbow stylo. We got a Jason Fox. Uh, you can see it right there. In the back there, Jason Fox. Um, it's another style off. Got a peach style. Then, you know, look, even the cocoa worms are extended. You know, on my pod, got great extension on the uh, man eater Zoas and all the high end Zoas. Anyway, so people ask me how, or oh, people, they like, people. I got about 30, 30 inquiries saying, man, what do you do for coloration? Are you adding as amino acids? What are you feeding? What's your feeding regimen? Well, here we go. Now, do I feed coral? See, I'm one of them cats that believe that that zero super clean reef stuff is all a mess because I've been uh, to the barrier, the Great Barrier. I went there on vacation and and swimming and talking to the to the the locals. You know that that there's parts of the reef that are very clear, but there's parts of the reef that I don't want to say murky, but they have a grainy look because why? That's all of that free flowing plankton and and, and nutrients that's in there that keeps them corals healthy and, and keeps them growing and, and keeps them uh, constantly uh, uh, just keeps them fed. So I take that same approach to a reef tank. Now, of course, I got. Let me see if I can open this up real quick here. Of course, I did step on filtration. I got a refugium. I got a high end skimmer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I'm not afraid to feed my coral. So what am I feeding? So let me go ahead and show you this. This is the best way. I guess let me flip it. This is what I feed my coral. So I'm really, let me see if I take this off, really into reef nutrition. So I go with some, yeah, let me take it down like this. It's better here. Huh? Oh, oh, sorry. I go for some, uh, I need my damn glasses. So these are real eggs. Oyster. Uh, first we have here fish eggs. Right? I do this about once a week. Now fish eggs is something I noticed that was really prevalent when I went to the Great Barrier. Because there's so many fish there. They're constantly spawning. And they just pretty much just fill the column at certain times with fish eggs. So filter feeders and everything else stay fed. That's one. I use Arctic pots. Once again, there was an extreme. Now I have, I did see the the the, the tank with live pods, but Arctic pods doesn't help, and they, they love it. Let me just see. quickly just drop it in, and look here it goes. Fish and everything just eat it up. Look at that. Look, it's just crazy, right? They go crazy for it. Another one is oyster feed. Okay, now I'm not sponsored by these, this, this company, but it's great stuff. This is for more for your intra, in, your intrabrates, you know, like uh, clams, my, even my cleaner shrimp, my cocoa worms, they all love this stuff here. And I'm just going to drop a little in right now, uh, just to show you. Now you see how I want you to notice this. 
if you can see that, that's exactly how the water looked when I went to the Great Reef. See the free swimming, all of the different, different uh, foods and, 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 and stuff that's floating around. That's exactly how it looked. Plato. Phyto feast. This is for more for, uh, once again, for feeding everything, basically. But it's more for my mefusion. My microalgae and stuff like that. I'm going to drop a little bit of this in. I actually, it's not my feed. They're actually getting a treat now. But because once again, it's in a quarter column. I keep everything running. I don't turn nothing off. Because, guys, think about this. When fish are feeding. Now, I know we have feeding cycles, right? And we normally cut feeding cycles off. Because we want to try to keep the food within the tank. Let them feed. And then cut the feeding cycle off. Let the filters cut on. Let it run through the mechanical and our filtration clean the tank out. But in the wild, there isn't none of that. Food is there. When they eat, they eat. And I also notice that with my Achilles Tang, he actually, especially fish like this that are hard to feed and, hard, and they're really not prone to eat, they really go out the food a lot better with the wave on with the fall, okay? And then, okay, let's get to the anemones. Now, that's more of just kind of blanket feeding everything in there. Now, when it comes to my anemones, I don't play either. I got reef chili, not my anemones, my, my corals. Reef chili and reef roids. Do I prefer one over the other? Not necessarily. I noticed that I get a little more polyp extension with reef roids, but I, but, but my, my, uh, my, coloration is better with reef chili so i do a mix of both now you said you're saying damn that's a lot well yeah that's a lot but we're trying to recreate the ocean here guys and the last thing i do and is that i have a dosing regimen right and now i use apex dose and i go a little high on the supplemental so every day over a 24 hour period five millimeters of Acro power. I'm getting pretty low on this. Now, this is probably the best additive I added to my coral. Man, this does wonders. Now, of course, I do the magnesium, alkalinity, and calcium. Oh, as you see, I need to change this filter. It's getting a little dirty. But I got dual dosing systems in there and a trident. So I'm not really, you know, my false face and not, my false face are really, you know, they, they, they slightly high at times and I feed heavy. But this is what it takes, guys. In my humble opinion, if you're going to have coral, remember, we're keeping water, right? We're not keeping coral and fish. We're keeping water. And I truly believe that keeping too clean of an environment for animals that are naturally uh, inclined to to gather their food or to live in in high nutrient areas defeats the purpose because once you you know you knock your, your phosphate nitrates down you pick up stuff like cyano and all other kind of bacteria take over right but when you're feeding your tank that's my tank everything is active I get polyp extension almost 24 7 everything is eating nothing's starving nothing's wanting for nothing I also believe it keeps down on warfare, chemical warfare between coral. Now you see, I get all kind of growth. You know, I got the little Ghani growing here. And then you know, I got another, I got a, I got a highlighter and I got another little guy that popped off the side that's doing great. You know, here are my uh, space invaders, my ACANs, my, my, my OG. Everything is doing great. So, I always say with the reef tank, it's consistency and patience is the best way. But don't be afraid to feed your corals. Corals are living animals, like anything else. I mean, even when I go down to my beta guy here, I mean, I even put him in a nice size house with some aeration and I feed him quite heavily because I want him to be fed. You'll quickly know if you're feeding too much because your tank will react in a way. My feeding regimen right now is very little algae. Very little algae, if any. I got great polyp extension. I don't get a high uh, algae uh, uh, growth on the glass. When that starts happening, either I know two things happen. I'm not on my husbandry, that which means my my housekeeping or my tank 
needs to be upped a little bit. I got to do some cleaning or I'm feeding too heavy. And I tell you, know your tank, know your size and give them a variety of food. Feed them. Try to recreate the ocean. Best advice I can give you for coloration. Because that's without heavy blues. Now, I go heavy blue. My tank looks fluorescent. It is quite beautiful. Anyway, please like, subscribe, hit the button below. OG Reefs and Aquariums bringing you the real reefer from a real guy who did tank maintenance and he ran the stores. And I've been around for years, guys. And I'm in a one-bedroom apartment. I got a 110-gallon water box. I got about thousands of dollars in animals inside there. I ain't lost thousands. Of, I ain't did it all, guys. Only thing I can tell you was there's not a cookie cutter approach to anything. What we want to do is try to reproduce the ocean as much as possible. We can keep it super clean, but the ocean isn't super clean. We can keep it crystal pristine water with zero, zero, zero. Ain't nothing going to live. Corals like that fish waste. They like that fish poop. Fish like to eat variety of food. Fish like to hunt food. Fish like to chase food. Fish like and corals like food moving it within a column. They like heavy flow. That's the way to success. Peace, like, subscribe. OG Reefs and Aquariums. Subscribe below. I appreciate your love. Questions hit me up. I'm out.